sad news. This is my third time recording this video because the first time I realized the audio wasn't recording, so I did it again a week later, and guess what? Just did it, and the audio wasn't recording again. So third time's a charm. I, I, I hope. I don't. I don't know. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is going over how I managed to create the Stranger Things intro inside of GarageBand with um, the completely free software that comes pre-installed on your Mac, on your iOS device. This is more geared towards the um, Mac version, but you can recreate it also in the iPhone and iPad. It may be a little bit different, but it is definitely possible. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started today. You're going to want to create a new GarageBand file. Make sure it's an empty project. And go ahead and set your up your software instrument and go ahead and press Command S or go to File Save. And we're going to save it because uh, I, I'm definitely struggling with uh, stuff not saving, right? Anyway. You can go ahead and just call this Stranger Things tutorial. I'm calling this Stranger Things tutorial underscore zero three because this is my third time. So basically throughout this tutorial, it's probably going to be three part series. I'm going to show you the first part, how to set up your sequence to get everything ready, then get maybe one to five instruments set up and maybe the intro and a little bit into it. Um, it is kind of more of a complicated song, but you know, we'll work through it. So the first to start off, we're going to change our BPM to 84. So it's 84 beats per minute. Our key signature can stay C major and it can stay in 4-4 timing. If you listen to the beginning, you sort of get that, that warm pad that fades into it with the little, I don't know how to describe it, the, the little things, you know? Okay, anyway. Um, so first we're going to work on the pad and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your library is open. So if you look here on the left side, left top corner, you'll see a little bookshelf or a file cabinet. You'll open that and we'll go under search library and we will go slow synth brass swell. That's what we want. If you don't see that, that might mean you need to get the instrument upgrade on GarageBand. Um, not too sure how to do that. There's a way. Sound library. Yeah, it's somewhere in here under sound library. Okay, so anyway, what we're going to be doing is playing an E major chord. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. And an E major consists of an E, a G, and a B. So on your keyboard, by the way, to bring this up, your virtual keyboard, it's Command K. So to play an E major, it's D, G, and J. And so with the octave that it's already set at, it's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and leave it there. So make sure that yours sounds just like this. And anyway, what's going to happen with that is going to play for one full bar. So we can make sure our cursor is left on bar one leave on the intro timing for four beats and then you're going to press r to start recording it's going to give you four beats and then you're going to play your chord and it's d g j and right up bar two you can let go tap space to stop so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this to trim it down to do that you just need to grab somewhere in the middle or closer to the bottom if you drag at the top, it goes to the loop. So we don't want to loop, we want to drag it back. So we drag it back to bar two. And then I like to make sure that everything's clean. So I go over here to my MIDI editor. It's the scissors in the top left corner. And what we're gonna do is zoom in a little bit and drag each note to the beginning first. Um, sometimes if they don't drag, just wiggle it a little bit and it should be good. Then we're gonna go to the end of bar one and make sure that they actually end. Alright, so now we're going to mess with the controls a little bit. So the controls is the dial right next to your media editor button in the top left corner. And so the first two things we're going to do, we're going to turn our detune all the way down. And we're going to take our filter all the way down. And then finally we're going to bring our reverb all the way up. Now what we want to do is we want to make it so it fades in slowly then drops right off at bar 2. So go ahead and check on automation which is right here next to your cursor tracker. So we're going to do show automation. Now volume should be selected by default. If not, you can click here and select volume. We're going to click inside to enable it and it'll set the beginning point. That's fine. I'm going to bar two, set a new point and we'll go back to bar one, bring it down. And then about a little bit after bar two, we want to bring it all the way down. So it'll sound like this. 
my bad guys um for some reason you can go ahead and bring this back to where it was my attack was not right so attack should be a route in this area about one and a quarter ticks from the half mark now this should sound right there we go that's what we want and right there it ends but we still have a little bit of the reverb left over okay next we're going to bring in the next instrument which is the little high-pitched frequency things that are dancing around and those are called the evolving oops i can't type evolving currents don't do shades um that's gross don't do that we're going to do evolving currents and so go ahead and bring it up and the way we're going to be play playing this one is we're going to bring our octave up two times so go ahead and press x twice so your octave range should be about here actually i think we go we might go one more yep we're going to go even one more higher so press x once more so three times total so it's going to sound really twangy really gross don't worry well play around with the effects after you can actually go ahead in your controls down here around where it says transform by the way there's a new update um on all these ones that have the transform panel um they now have controls and i absolutely love it i'm freaking out right now but anyway back back to transform we're gonna bring this down to detuned that's the setting we want so it'll sound a lot different as you can see right there it's scary it's detuned it's even twangy or i don't know how but it is anyway what we're going to be playing is a c major seventh chord but we're going to be playing in arpeggiating style and i'll show you how to do that so if you look up here at the key signature whenever you play a chord in garage band on the virtual keyboard it will show you which chord it is so if we play a basic c we have a c chord but what we're going to do is we're going to add in that seventh and now it's a c major seventh as you can see um and so the way you play a C major 7th is a C, E, G, a B, and a C. Now the B is what makes it the 7th. Without that, it would just be a C chord. Um, so in layman's terms, that translates to an A, D, G, J, K on your keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to play that in arpeggiating style really quick. And by arpeggiating style, I mean rolling your fingers across the keyboard. You'll sort of get a motion to um, make it have an up and down effect. So it'll sound like this. And so you can use the automated um, arpeggiator under the controls panel, set the rate up really high, and it'll sort of sound like this. But to me that goes too fast. I like to do it manually. So what we're going to do is you're going to set our cursor to bar 1. We're going to tap record and you're going to play A, D, G, J, K, and then go back down J, G, D, A. Alright, we'll go ahead and start that. And so as you can see, I screwed up because I went a little bit too far, but you know what? There's no screw ups in music, they're just happy mistakes, as Rob Doss would say. Okay, so. Anyways, what we're going to be doing is we're going to tweak a few things. I believe the equalizer should be fine. Yep, we want to leave it there. Um, the only thing is we're going to go to volume under automation. Go ahead and enable it and drag this way down. We don't we don't want much. And all we want to do is at the very last part, bring it up a little bit. So what I'm doing is just before the end, I'm bringing it up so it has a higher slope, as you can tell. And then once again, we want to make sure it drops right when it's done. So it should sound like this. And it sort of cuts off. Um, that's, that's what we want. We don't want any more reverb, no echo, no more volume. Perfectly fine. So that's your intro right there. I mean, we already have that going. Um, that's pretty identical to what the actual song sounds like. Um, the next part we're going to be working on is part two is the heartbeat drum. So that sort of goes... Uh, don't know if you could hear that at all, but that's what it sounds like. Um, anyways, we're going to go into a new instrument, like I clicked the plus software instrument, just like before. We're going to do seismic drum. So it should just come up as seismic. That's S-E-I-S, seis in Spanish, by the way. Um, anyways, what it, the way I did the drums in the song is I used one for the lower frequencies to get more of the bass out of the drum. And then I also used a higher one for the... Um, I mean, another drum for the higher frequencies for more of the hit, because on one of them I like the sound that it hits, but not the aftermath, and the other one I just like the aftermath, if that makes any sense. Um, it probably will as we go. 
if you would like you could just use this first drum I show you um, but if you want it to sound amazing like mine did then you can follow the instructions so I mean it's up to you so for the drum our octave is so high right now we don't even have any instruments so we're gonna bring it down three more because that's where we're at yours may be different but you want your C1 note to sound like this nope that's that's completely wrong to sound like this there we go that's the kick drum we want on some computer speakers you may not be able to hear that right now but that's okay it will show up in other speakers so just just pretend like you can hear it am I right okay so you're gonna tap A that's your C I know it's confusing when I say A and C but some of you will understand A on your keyboard is a C musically even though we're playing a drum that's what I mean so the way that the heartbeat drum works is on every beat it goes bum 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 Bum, bum. So it's super easy. So we're going to set our cursor to bar 2, press record, and on the first hit, we're going to press A. And we're going to simulate the rest ourselves. So I'm going to tap record and just once. That's all I need. Um, we're going to drag the trim level back down to half a bar, which is, two, which <clears throat> is the start of beat 3 in bar 2. So we're going to make sure seismic is select. <laughs> selected and we're going to choose the track and we're going to choose our MIDI editor like before. I'm going to get rid of this again by either hitting the X or command K as a quick key. And as you can see I was so far off it's not funny. So we're going to click it and drag it all the way back to 2 because we want it to be exact because we're perfectionists on the Zaps channel. Then what you're going to do is when you click on this note it should be highlighted. It jogs into GarageBand's memory the last note you, that you had and so what we can do is if we hold command, you can see the pencil item comes up to create a new note. And we're going to click on the same line at the next quarter beat right next to it. So it should sound like this. Just like that. And we're actually going to bring the trim on our track down to a quarter bar because we're going to loop it. So what happens is when you bring it down to a quarter, if you drag in the top right, you can start to loop it. So you can see it's grayed out a little bit because it's repeating. So it should sound like this. And you can see that's right perfect on B. Um, so for this, we can go ahead and drag it as far as we want because it's going to be used throughout the entire song. Now the one thing we're going to do next is we're going to change the controls on it to match what I have done. Um, they are a little bit different and if you listen to the original song you don't want that much of a low frequency. You'll see what I'm saying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our kick down about to 30% full and we're gonna take <clears throat> turn our percussion and shakers all the way down and then we're gonna turn our drive to about 25%. So now it'll sound a little bit different like this. And you can see that's way better. It's as a heartbeat sound. Um, it's exactly what we want to go for. Um, if you can't hear that, you might want to turn up your volume and turn your kick up and your perks and shakers up just so that you can get more high frequency tones because some speakers can't display it. But if you have good headphones, you should be fine. Um, anyways, we're going to go on volume. We're going to check it. And what we're going to do is going to make a check after the first beat and one at the beginning and one in the middle. And so what this does we're going to bring it down a little bit and the reason because is we're going to turn the kick and the perks and shakers all the way up on this first one because if you listen to the original track the first hit is the hardest and so we want to stress that first one to cut them off from the intro and introduce them to the song that's sort of what the composers did so we're going to go over here to where it says volume we already did that so now we're going to move to kicks kick is singular um, we're going to enable it set a dash right at the beginning one right after and once again one in the middle turn it up in the middle as you can see this perfectly compensates with our volume that's what we want and then we're also going to go to perks and shakers and this one's going to be a little bit bigger in the middle put it a little bit less than your kick should sound like this now mm, I can't really hear it so I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit more there we go. So it's a little faint, but the first one is louder than the rest with the perks and shakers. Even though you turn the volume down, the frequencies are different. So there will be a difference, very minor, but I mean, it's worth it. Next, we're going to 
put the second drum in to add the high frequency um, part of the drum. And when I say high and low frequency, the low is sort of the bass tones you get with it, and the high is sort of the physical hit of the drum. And so we want a different one. So we're going to search, and we're going to go boutique, that's spelled B-O-U-T, and don't do 78. That is so gross. I actually don't know what that is, but don't do that. We're going to do 808. That's the one. So basically it's going to be the same thing. We're going to actually drag the track from Seismic to Boutique. And what we're going to do is going to hold the Option key and we're going to left click on the Seismic track. Never mind. We're going to click on it. <laughs> click on it first and hold Option and click and drag down. Let go of your mouse before you let go of Option. What that does is it takes the original track, copies all attributes such as the perks and shakers and kick drum and applies it to the new drum. So it should sound like this. This is our new drum. This is our open. So now we're going to tweak with it a little more because it's not perfect in my mind. And the only difference that we have here is we're going to turn our di distortion to one dash before the halfway mark. Now it should sound like that. That's a pretty good heartbeat if you ask me. And if you add in the extra low frequency, it sounds pretty dang good. Um, so you can definitely mess with those as you want. If you feel like it sounds different, um, if you don't agree with me, um, that's rude. But I mean, you can do it. So the next thing that we're going to add is the arpeggiators. So this is my favorite part about the whole project because it's the most iconic part, really. When you hear this part, you know what song it is. Um, I'll show you what that means. So we're gonna do a new instrument. Software instrument is always we don't we don't do that other crap. Um, just kidding. It's not crap. I don't. It's okay. Fine. We're gonna go search library. We're gonna do a new instrument called Dream Dancer. Don't do voice or bells. Once again, that's gross, and I will judge you if you use it, so don't. I'm gonna title this one, Dream Dancer 1. You can do that by double clicking on the text. The reason being, we're gonna have two of them. We're actually gonna have two seismic drums too, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a one there as well. Just to fix any confusion, if you have it, it's always good to rename your instruments completely, but for this project, I'm just gonna leave them for now. It's just a good way to usually do it. The Dream Dancer, I really like. It's the, I'll show you what we're gonna be playing. So as you can see right now, it's a little bit too much tone and not enough decay. So we're going to we're going to fix that. So let's change some of the controls. So we're going to take our glide and move it to 25% full. Then we're going to take our cutoff, bring it all the way down. That way we don't get as much tone and bring our decay all the way up. And then lastly, we're going to turn our ambience all the way up and our reverb all the way down because we don't want any extra echo in between each note hit but we still want it to sound like it's, in, like it's in a room. If that makes any sense, doesn't have to, I know, it's okay. So now it should sound like this. Oh my God, that's perfect. Okay, that's what we want. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be playing the same C major seventh chord that we did on Evolving Currents, except three octaves lower and a little bit slower. <laughs> we're gonna be playing it for one half bar we're going to do one full rotation and a full rotation is just a d g j k j g d and the reason why we don't include the last a is because we're going to have it loop and it's going to hit that automatically so we're going to press record and i'll show you exactly how that sounds so i mean by doing that by ear i can tell it was not perfect at all that's the beauty of MIDI editing. We go ahead and go to our MIDI editor. You can see I was way off on every single note possible. So I'm just gonna take these, I'm gonna drag them to each quarter beat mark. That's that's what we want. They should snap. If they don't move, just give them a little wiggle. Make sure it stays on the same line though. You should be able to see with the ghosting frame effect. Just make sure they snap right on. Um, at this point, it doesn't really matter how long the duration goes as it does have a glide effect, so it should be fine. Wow, I was I was really off on my playing skills. That's okay though. And if you did accidentally press A on the last one and you have another note here and it looks like it belongs at the beginning of bar two, beat three, just click it and press delete. That'll get rid of that because we don't need it because it's gonna repeat. 
All right, so we can go ahead and close that for extra room. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our Dream Dancer track and we're going to trim it down to one half of a bar. And then we'll repeat it for one, see how it sounds. Oh my god, I, it's off. i sorry. So, looks like right here my second note. That's a sharp. We don't want that. We want that one higher. Hey, <laughs> there we go. That's right. Okay. So as you can see, even I make mistakes sometimes. That's perfectly fine. Um, once again, we're going to take this and drag it way the heck over there because we'll use it forever. Um, next, we're going to actually make a second Dream Dancer. This one's going to have different controls, though, and a different note base. So you can either copy this Dream Dancer down, but we're actually going to change the controls differently. So I'm just going to make a new track again. So a new software instrument. Don't do anything else. Dream, not voice, Dancer. There we go. And the title Dream Dancer 2. So we'll go ahead and go into the controls right away and get those set up. So for these, we want to bring our glide up to about half. Actually, let's go even a little more. One tick after the half. The chord is also going to go to the third, the third snap. Um, it goes one, two, three, four. So that's the fourth one. So we want the third one. So it's about 75% full, I guess you could say. And once again, oops, oops. Oh no, what? That's not supposed to happen. That's, what? Okay, bear with me. Okay, for some reason, I actually just ran into a glitch. That's, I have not had that happen very much. Um, Like before, we're gonna turn our decay all the way up. We're gonna turn our delay all the way down. Our reverb, we're actually going to bring one notch after the half, because we do want it to reverb a little bit. I think that's a verb. I mean, it, it's reverb, so why not? Um, And ambience all the way up. So it should sound like this. <laughs> hey, there we go. I'm actually going to turn my reverb down just a one more notch. And so basically what we're going to be playing here is an E and an F. And so on your keyboard, that's actually a D and an F. Yeah, I, I, I know, confusing. It's okay though. So you press the D and the F. And as you see, because we have the glide set a little bit higher this time, what it's doing is it's dragging between each note. So once you press a D, it sets the note there, then you press an F, it takes a little bit of time before it actually hits a perfect pitch on an F. So that's what we want. And basically what this is, is if you listen to the original, there's a faint, a faint drifting tone every, every half bar, I believe. That's what I've, that at least what I thought I heard. So anyways, we're going to simulate that by pressing D on the first bar and oops, F on the half beat. Oh, that was wrong. We're actually gonna press it on every quarter beat. So tap record, press D on the first hit and F on the first quarter beat as followed. So there, I just need two, that's perfect. I'm going to trim this down to half a bar, go into my MIDI editor because I always screw up, and drag it to where it's supposed to go. Once again, the length is fine, velocity should stay around 97. If yours isn't there, just try to make it there. And then we're also going to drag this guy way out. And then one final touch, we're going to take this volume knob and bring it down quite a bit because we don't want to hear it too much because it's not too important. Now it should sound like this. Bring mine up a little bit. I'm actually going to go back and turn the reverb back up. Right there, that should be good. So, as this is looping, if you look at the audio meter, you can see the first beat always goes a little farther. And that's what I was talking about with the drum. We wanted to cut it off. This is what the whole song will sound like. Actually, I think I'm going to drag this out a little bit more along with the twangy things, the evolving currents and this, uh, the brass swell, just because I feel like it ends a little bit too prematurely. All right, next we're going to do the final part of this first tutorial, which is completely optional to you, is actually not an original song, I don't believe. 
um, I thought that it could use a little bit of base as it's a little dry and the base I it always just tends to bring things up so we're gonna make a new instrument um, again if you don't want to do this it's perfectly fine you can move on to the next part of the tutorial series but I will show those who would like to do it I feel like it adds an extra effect to the to the song and everybody should always have their own originality when they're trying to recreate things so we'll go to our library again and search up subby bass um, I don't make the names here so I don't please don't judge me about that but it's it's fine okay anyways what this is going to be doing is we're going to be playing a simple slow bass tone throughout up to bar nine I believe um, it's going to sound like this which is a B in music terms um, and we'll go right here which is above the C2 I believe um, so if you should sound like this if you can't hear that that's what we're playing for those of you who can't pick up the bass sounds that's what we're gonna be playing in basically I'm just gonna hold it through bar two through bar nine so it it's gonna be boring but we're gonna do it so pre press record and hold that for nine bars eight bars I just did the math so as you're listening right now it's way too much bass I completely understand that I don't want that at all um, but we're gonna go into the controls after and spice it up a little bit and make it ours I already I love this song anyways we're gonna end it right at bar nine end of the trim there and we're gonna also um, because I started prematurely it also clipped this extra I don't want that so we're gonna trim that back to bar two and you know what that means I screwed up but you know we, we all screw up so I'm gonna take this once again drag it to bar two go to bar nine drag it to bar nine and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this volume drag it way down to about the same area as dream dancer 2 so it should sound like this so it's very faint um once again you can play around with it change the tone change the controls change which note it is how many times it's played you could arpeggiate the bass you can do whatever you want this is sort of just a touch I did very simple very minor I don't even think you'd be able to hear it on certain speakers unless you have it turned up the right way and make sure that speaker can actually play the, <laughs> the frequency but anyways I think that's where, where we're going to end it today on the first part of the tutorial um, the other one should be out very soon uh, if it is the link will be right on right on your screen somewhere um, and then there will be a third one right after that the next one we're going to be adding in our organs our pads or other synthesizers that really bring the life into it so as you can see right now we just sort of have a beginning and this can really turn into any song you can use this for any sort of basis but this is just a basic training on GarageBand um, but anyway thank you guys for watching if you do have any questions or anything like that or comments at all just comment it down below my email is on my channel uh, you can hit me up on Twitter anything works but thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial